Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Carol Manning and in this video I'm going to be doing this easy to paint seagull at the seaside in watercolours. I'm going to be doing the background as well as the seagull. Um, I'm keeping the techniques in this really simple so it's suitable for all levels including beginners. So I'm starting by putting a wash where the sea is on the background and I'm using for this Windsor & Newton colours and I'm using Windsor Blue for this. So you do need a fairly big brush for this wash. You can use smaller but it's easier with a big brush. Now I'm working my way carefully around the edges of the seagull. You could put some masking fluid on this as well so that you don't have to worry about going over the edges. I haven't bothered in this because I made the assumption that not everybody would have masking fluid. So I've just gone up carefully to the edges. I'm not too worried about there being a slight line effect because we are talking about the sea. So there are lines in it. Um, it's a slightly different shade to the blue in the photograph because I wanted something slightly brighter. But if you wanted a blue nearer to it than probably something like French Ultramarine or Indanthrene Blue, would be a slightly darker blue but I so wanted something slightly brighter for this. Now I've made a slight mistake there with the blue, very easy to do, I'll lift it a bit later. It doesn't actually come off completely but it doesn't really matter. Um, in the final picture it looks fine. So mistakes are totally acceptable. And you see I'm using a fairly wide flat brush for this. I will put the a list of all the materials and equipment I use in the description. So I'm adding over the top of that some lines of Indanthrene Blue. Mixed with a tiny little bit of sepia just to get a nice dark blue just to get those darker lines that are in the picture. I mean they've actually got probably got more brownie colours in that but I didn't want that particularly in the picture I'm doing but you obviously are welcome to have a go at this to paint it as it is. I so say I'm trying to keep the techniques in this as simple as I can to make it suitable for beginners because I do tend to normally paint very detailed. So I'm trying to lift that. It doesn't lift completely because it's dark, quite dark colour and I probably left it a little bit long. If I'd lifted that straight away it might well have come up but by the time I put the next colour on it doesn't really show that much. So I'm just adding some diluted lamp black here to make a grey. Nothing fancy. And I'm putting it slightly stronger around the feet where that's that, where there's that darker shadow. I'm using a slightly smaller brush here. Um, I think it's about number five this one, so not too small. I've obviously got this speeded up, it does take a bit longer than it's showing in the videos. But doing, watching me do a wash for, um, in real time would have been a bit tedious probably. So for the sand I'm using a very diluted Van Dyke Brown which has given me quite a soft a sandy brown and then just add in some bits in a little bit more concentrated where there's more shadow.
Let's see, I'm just putting a little bit darker. Of that darker mixed with a little bit of lamp black there just to create that sort of um, shadowy section there. See, I wasn't too worried about the blue because it sort of looks a bit like a reflection of the sea when you can see it there. Again, working my way carefully around those feet and legs. And then a little bit of diluted raw umber over the top. At least on that left hand side. So I've already done a tiny little bit on the face. I've put some yellow, lemon yellow on the beak and the eye is a wash and a tiny little bit of diluted lamp black put a bit of grey on the edge of the beak and a tiny little bit of diluted Windsor orange on the end of the beak. So I'm now using lamp black to edge the eye, put a black pupil in the centre of the eye, the nostril and just starting to go round with a small miniature brush add in some details. So I'm edging the beak carefully as I sound using a 10 stroke zero brush on this. So you do need a fine brush for this, but it's fairly straightforward other than that. So add a little bit of grey, more grey onto the beak. And it is just carefully putting the splodges, there's a lot of sort of splodgy effect on the end of the seagull's beak, so just a case of putting that in. Carefully working around that. So apologies for any noises in the background. Husband's working in the garage next door and there is the odd crash and bang. So that's the face almost done and I'm just putting in the black lines that show where the other eye would be, sort of the eyebrow I guess, and just putting in some fine feather lines using that brush around the eye. I'm just a slightly bigger brush because I want to put a bit of a wash, grey wash there to get that grey in and using that slightly bigger brush to start adding some sort of grey wash effect around there and then there's that shadow of the beak which is really long and just making that slightly darker and taking it up under the actual beak. So I'm just using diluted lamp black for this and keeping it fairly simple and I am using swapping between the miniature brush for the really tiny effects but the rest of the time I'm using a number five brush, round brush. So there's quite a lot of shadow. The other colour I'm using for shadows which is a really nice colour when you're doing add into white is this cerulean blue so very diluted cerulean blue so just continuing round edging and 
add in shadow using that cerulean blue at the moment. Obviously paying attention all the time to the reference photo when I'm adding these marks. Chose this picture because it's a fairly straightforward one. There's only a little bit of the wing showing, so which keeps it simpler. Obviously the wings tend to be a bit more complicated. So by choosing a picture which hasn't got much of the wing showing, it's easier to do. So the bottom half that is underside is very much in shadow. So I'm using that cerulean blue, very diluted as a first layer there. The other thing I did which didn't film which you might be able to see in this picture is I did put a little bit of like fleshy colour on the legs as a wash that's all I've done with them um, which was a mixture of diluted Windsor yellow and permanent rose very diluted mixed together until you get the right mix to make a sort of fleshy type colour. So that's all I've done on the legs so far, it's just put that wash on. So I've had a couple of bits that unfortunately didn't film. I think that must have been when I did the wash with a beak, that part didn't film either. But it was nothing major I was doing there. So just using very fine light strokes on this. Just putting in those little markings going around the body and the neck to create that shadow and also the feathery effect. And then on top of that I'm putting a bit of diluted lamp black to make a light grey, lifting it slightly which automatically sort of creates a um, textured effect. So what I'm going to do now, obviously let that, I would let that dry in between, is using that grey again to just put some marks in where the wings are. So I'm looking carefully at the reference photo which I've got on my tablet in front of me. I tend to do that rather than have a photograph because I can zoom in and out. But if you want to print a photograph that would be fine. So starting with that light grey and then just putting some darker over the top. It's darker um, at the very bottom part where I am now and then in that joint in between. Obviously there's a second layer of feathers there but this is enough to get the wing effect that's showing in this particular picture. Just bring some feather lines into the wings there. So I've not used a huge amount of colours on the seagull itself beyond the cerulean blue and the lamp black diluted for the white area. So if you get it slightly too dark or not quite right, just lift it with a bit of kitchen roll. Just put another layer, now that's part dried enough, I'm just adding a slightly darker layer, or darker marks, onto those wings. I'm not putting a massive amount of detail onto them. a few 
few lines where the body overlaps with the wings and just putting the odd lines in. Again, starting to put some of those marks that are on the underside. There are these odd sort of splodgy, sort of like dirty marks on his underside where he's got sort of slight discoloration or it could be dirt, I don't know. Um, whether they're markings or dirt, I'm not totally sure. So I've been zoomed in slightly onto that bit, a bit more. And I'm using a Wisp Filbert brush for this. So it's got like this um, odd hair effects which is quite good to quickly do some marking, sort of feather markings. Obviously you could do this with a normal brush, it just takes a bit longer. And I decided I would just keep it simple. It's quite a nice one for creating that feather effect where you don't have to do every individual feather line. I do use it occasionally, often more as an undercoat, but it's quite nice for birds bird feathers. I tend to use it less for animal feathers because there's more overlapping involved there. Bird markings are often a little bit more, they go more in the same direction as the fur does. I'm just putting a few marks around on this and I'm using both the grey and the cerulean blue for this. A few marks around his head with this. So down to the legs. Now as I said I put that fleshy colour on earlier and I'm just using again the diluted lamp black to outline the legs to start with. There isn't a huge amount of colour on the legs, quite, it's all quite um, blends in a little bit to the background so you want it to stand out a little bit so just edging it with the grey, putting some of those markings in, go make the ridges effect and again there's quite a lot of shadow on these legs so just putting in those that shadow. Got one little toe that goes behind there. it a bit darker because it's not standing out enough yet so make it till it stands out enough against the colours you've got in your background otherwise it will just sort of get a bit lost. Again putting some of those ridge marks on. So I'm not doing a lot more than that with the feet now the second leg, again I didn't film for some reason, but the process was exactly the same as I've done on this left hand leg, so nothing different. So zooming out again and just adding a little bit more of a darker section in the middle there. The other thing I've done in the meantime, which again didn't film, apologies for that, is I used a stiff flat brush and just 
and water and kitchen roll and paper and just lifted some lines in at the, on the bottom half of the sea. You can probably see there's some lighter areas and an edge where it joins the sand. So all I've done is use a stiff brush and water and lifted one at a time those marks and put some to get that white of those sort of foam effect on the sea. Just add in some darker shadow under the at the back of the legs and just some darker markings into that foreground. I'm almost at the end there. Just add in a touch of dark shadow on the iris of the eye and a little bit more dark around the face there. Just giving a bit more shadow around the eye base over the eye basically. Nothing too major. Just felt it needed a little bit more there. A bit more onto that chin. So you kind of make adjustments as you go along. The reference photo for this is from Pixabay and the link to that is in the description below and my line drawing is available at the end of the video if you wish to pause and screenshot. Alternatively I do have a Facebook group which should be welcome to join which I put PDFs of any line drawings I do or if they're photos I've taken myself then I'll put those up as well. I'm just adding a few more odd marks on the underside. It's really just touching up bits. Not much to do on this one. And you probably don't need to do this stage if you don't want to. So hopefully if you are a beginner or you you wish to watercolours, then this is of help. And if you have enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd press the like and comment and consider subscribing if you want to see some more videos I'm hoping to do some more easy slightly more beginner ones as I go along or at least put the occasional one in So here's the finished picture and the line drawing is about to come up. I hope you've enjoyed watching and hopefully I will see you here again.